Hey everybody, welcome back to For Our Diaries and here we're talking to photographer Mike Baker. Mike, how you doing today? <laughs> I'm good, Robin, I'm very good, thanks. It's a Saturday and you came all the way out to hang some work up. These are uh, some of Mike's uh, beautiful photography pieces. Um, so Mike, do you wanna just kind of talk a little bit about your photography? Well, geez, where do I begin? I've been shooting uh, a long time. Actually, I started back in, geez, back in uh, the 70s when I was in the military, um, just to document my travels when I was in Europe, in Berlin in particular. And um, I got my first 35 millimeter camera uh, while I was in Berlin. Uh, and I traveled all over Europe for the two years I was there. Uh, and photography came to be, um, a, a passion of mine, and um, I, it's something I just stayed with uh, if the, even after coming back from the military. And um, I joined camera clubs, uh, read a lot of articles. I've, I haven't taken any formal training. So, for example, I don't have a, a formal degree in fine arts or photography. I've taken a lot of um, informal training, and I went out and, sh and shot and made a lot of mistakes and learn from those mistakes. Um, and I befriended a number of photographers who were better than me and I uh, learned from them and I kept shooting and kept shooting and I eventually gravitated to a certain type of photography, black and white, uh, fine art, and um, that's where I am today. Yeah, so. that, you know, and that's great because, you know, in my philosophy um, or school of thought is that um, artists aren't made, they're born. And you don't need a degree uh, necessarily to be an artist. I mean, yeah. you either are or you're not. You can train anybody how to use a camera or paint a picture or anything like that. But passion is what you need and what you're born with to actually be a fine artist in my book. So, but I'm glad that you said that because, you know, I think a lot of people think that that's, you know, they're looked down on if they don't have a degree in this or that or whatever. Yeah, you really don't. I mean, it, it's nice, but you really don't have to. The, the, the passion comes in desiring to get better. Yeah. And you have to take it upon yourself to uh, and motivate yourself to get better. Yeah. Um, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Absolutely. Because that, that's part of the learning process, too. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and doing it for you, for you know, your photography is using your vision of what you see and creating, you know, your pieces. Yeah. You're not trying to be like, you know, anybody else. You're doing your true self. And I think when you do that, even through photography, you're shining a light on things that a lot of people wouldn't have noticed in an everyday world. Right, right. One thing I've learned over the years is, um, there was a time when I used to shoot to impress other people, right? Um, I shoot because that's what everybody wants to see. And um, I've learned over the years that I've got, yeah, I became dis dissatisfied with photography because, um, you know, the latest technique I was using just to get the accolades and, but I really wasn't satisfying myself. And when I finally came to the realization is I shoot for myself and everybody, if people like it, that's great. If they don't like it, that's great. But I'm satisfying, satisfying my inner, um, my inner being, I guess, um, when it comes to photography. And I love to do it. So um, I do, you know, I do more than just snapshot photography. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned to um, look at my subjects, you know, look at it, the lighting, how the light falls on a subject. Um, look at it, you know, that same subject different times of the day. How can I improve upon it? How can I make it mine? Right. As opposed to taking a snapshot and shooting what everybody else shoots. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. and, you, and you learn that over time. Yeah, you know, and so that's That's not great. an overnight thing. And, overnight you know, I thing. think I've heard from a lot of artists, too, is the fact that just like what you said, you kind of gotten, you know, down about it and, you know, you're looking at your stuff and you're like, this isn't really me. What mm -hmm. am I doing? You know, I, I can tell you, I, over the past 20 years, um, I've met a lot of disgruntled artists who are really down on themselves. You know, they, they, they just don't feel it anymore because they got caught up in creating things they thought other people would like. Right. 
Right. And they didn't have any passion for it, but they just did it anyways. And then it turns out that people didn't really like it after all, because now they're stuck with all these pieces that they created for somebody else that didn't right. exist. Right. <laughs> so, right. Right. <clears throat> but can you um, describe some of the things that's happening in, in your pieces here? Okay, so uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, I like to experiment. I consider myself a visual artist. Mm -hmm. Uh, as, an, as, a, as opposed to a photographer. A visual artist, in my mind, is someone that can take an image. And I use photography as the medium to create my visual art. Right. Just as a painter uses brushes, canvas, paint to create a scene. Yes. I, like, I consider myself you, as a photographer that uses the camera, the lens, um, and other techniques to create a, a, a vision. This particular image here, you won't believe this, but the 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 this is an image, a close-up image of a watch. Wow. The face of a watch, because mm -hmm. you can see yeah. you can see the numbers here in the in the, in the second hand, things like that. And I I wanted to create something unique, something that no one else has done before, um, and I use some tools to create that. I call that a uh, regulator, a mind crusher, and. Um, one thing you'll notice about my work is I love to do black and white. I could go on all day about why I like black and white as opposed to color, um, but uh, I, black and white just draws me, draws me, um, and I, I, can, I can envision, I can look at any scene and I automatically try to envision it in black and white. Yeah. That's just the, the I think everything of my has its now. place. I love that black and white. I, I used to shoot black yeah. and white exclusively back in the day. I love this piece. It kind of has a little bit of a fractal uh, feel to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love the lighting, and uh, actually, uh, I I think the composition is fantastic. Yeah. So um, yeah, bravo to that. Yeah, and this one is probably <clears throat> uh, I call this the business crowd. Mm -hmm. um, I shot this downtown Chicago, and. Um, I did some things to it. I shot it in the broad daylight in the afternoon, sunny day. But if you were to look closely at the image, I added rain, um, added raindrops to give it. I mean, you have this, these sculptures of business people holding umbrellas. Geez, why not have rain? So I did that. I converted it to black and white. And that's a very popular image um, to some of to people. I've, I've had a number of people buy this image. Yeah. Uh, very popular. Uh, this one here, I shot, it's a woman sitting in the doorstep in, in uh, Havana, Cuba. I had an opportunity to visit Cuba twice, and um, I'm walking down the street and I just see this woman sitting in the doorway, and there's some other women in the background, in the, in the shadows here, and yeah. she just, and she was just it's staring off striking. into the, yeah. to the dinner, and, and to the uh, distance, and um, it just, it just, hit me that I have to get that shot. And um, again, the black and white brings out the texture in the walls and things like that. So that, I, I love that image. Um, this one here is another one that, um, that I created. It's actually two images superimposed. Mm -hmm. um, the skyline of Chicago, for you Chicago ones who know, know the city, um, this is the skyline of Chicago but I superimposed a moon behind the city. Now, you will never see the moon that large. Right. Um, and I said, if you see that, it's time to head for the hills. <laughs> That's right. Um, right? So, but, but I shot that and um, I did some things in the water to uh, bring the shadow, the reflection of the skyline in the water. Mm -hmm. And then I did some things also to um, bring out the reflection of the moon in the water. If I hadn't added this here, it would be just an ordinary picture, in my opinion. Right. But I had to add this reflection of the moon mm -hmm. in the water to make this more real, although this is considered an altered reality image. Yeah. Right? You're not but gonna it's be great, able though. Right. You're not gonna be able to shoot this directly straight out of the camera and print it. You have to do some work with that. So yeah. I like doing I mean, those kinds of it. things. You did a great job. Yeah. I also have a color version of this which um, which looks pretty good too, but uh, I think I've seen the color version yeah, um, too. But the, I, I really like the black and white. 
stuff. And guys, I will be posting um, still images um, at the end of this video of Mike's pieces so that you can get a closer look as well as um, his uh, online presence, social media and website and all of that will be in the descriptions. Right. So Mike, I guess one of the things for me as a photographer as well um, in, in, in talking to you over the years about photography, you know, I think one of the things I I don't know if it's perplexed you or not, but I think nowadays I've sort of slowed down a lot in showing my photography, not taking it because something's always catching my eye. I'm always shooting something, especially in nature, but I don't find the excitement that much out there for photography because I think now with smartphones and all this and that, I think a lot of people consider themselves a photographer. What's your take on that? Well, I guess how do you define a photographer? A photographer is somebody who takes pictures, but then, then there are, then what level of photography do you want to achieve? I mean, if you want to use a smartphone and take a picture, the smartphone, the cameras on smartphones these days are absolutely amazing oh yeah i love it um and the tools you can use to really create nice images it, it's there but you know a lot of people don't want to for whatever reason don't want to spend the money on the high the high-end gear um you know lenses cameras those kinds of things and that's okay there's no wrong answer there but um i like personally i like shooting and I like printing and I also do shows, art shows, and people like my work and people purchase my work. But um, I mean, everybody has their own level of, of how far they want to go into, into photography. People just want to take snapshots to record the scene that they, that they want to capture. Others want to do go the next level, go beyond just taking the snapshots. Um, I'm not sure if that's answering your question. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean it. Because I can. I mean it. <laughs> it, it basically does. In a, in yeah. a way, I think a lot of times when I talk to a lot of different photographers, they kind of feel, you know, um, between a rock and a hard place. Because you know, yeah. I mean, for me, I I mean, I still have my old DSLR that I used to shoot a lot of my nature photography, but it's very cumbersome to me. You know, I have bad legs, so I'm not really able to carry backpacks of stuff and yeah. tripods and all that stuff. So I do now rely on my smartphone because it's with me all the time, no matter where I'm at. And I can always, something catches me and I can shoot it. But I also use a lot of the pro modes in mm -hmm. my phone. So there is a difference between somebody who can just point and shoot and another person that actually is moved by a scene. Right and who can compositionalize it in order to get it exactly how you felt about it. Yeah, well, you know, the right lighting, that, that moment in time, right. you know. Um, so there is that difference, you know. Right, so, so there are those, like I said, there are those who want to take the snapshot just to record the scene, and then there are those that want to have control over the scene itself. In other words, you want to control over the lighting, what's in focus, what's out of focus. Um, if you want to do long exposures, you can't, I guess with now with some, some mobile phones now, they, they do provide the capability to do long exposures. But when you want to, when you want to start having control over the output of the final product of your image, then you're going to need to get the lenses, get the software tools, those kinds of things. Now, as far as weight, the DSLRs are heavy. I still shoot with a DSLR. One of these days, I'm going to move over to mirrorless, but um, those those are merely tools for you to to, 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 to get the work you want, right? Yeah. So, you know, someone says, "Well, I have a mirrorless camera. Um, I can take better pictures." Uh, not necessarily so. Right. Absolutely. Um, you can shoot with a DSLR, but if you know how to handle, if you know how to use the capabilities of your of your camera. You can shoot the yeah. same. Um, mirrorless cameras are a lot lighter. I know about carrying, you know, heavy camera yeah. gear on a, in a backpack. I'm Especially still when you're it. hiking. Yeah, 
Yeah, or even walking around the city. Yeah, so um, I mean, it's, it, yeah. it, is, it is a big difference. I think a lot of people don't get it because they think, oh, you know, I'm at the beach, I can get this really nice picture of the sunset. And yeah, it is a really nice picture, but it doesn't make you a photographer. You know, just like because you splash some paint on a canvas doesn't make you a painter. Yeah, I you know, I mean, it, yeah. it, there's 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 lines in the sand that somehow got blurred over the years, and I think that <clears throat> it's not to to discourage people to be creative because I think creativity belongs to everybody. But there's certainly a difference between a novice and somebody who is a fine artist. Right. Exactly. So you know, I <laughs> I just think. Uh, when you rely on the apps and this and that to make the picture, that's not necessarily your photography. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's so, the so. same thing to be said with, you know, anything. You know, when you rely heavily on that thing, that lens or that gear or that, uh, you know, uh, photo uh, app or whatever thing you use to uh, render your images, yeah. well, if you over rendered, is it your art or is it somebody else's art? Are, is it your photography or somebody else's photography? I mean, it all becomes into play. You have right. to find the balance. Right. So, right, like I said, like like you said, you know, you know, just because you you take pictures doesn't make you a photographer. Um, and then you mentioned fine art photography. When you you consider yourself a fine art photographer, when you when you have control and you take advantage of, um, uh, well, you create you create your own vision mm -hmm. of a scene. So I can take a picture of, I'll say this this um, skyline here, and I can, as a fine artist, I can go in and change the direction of the light. Of uh, I can make it look like light is coming onto these buildings from the left, right, or it's coming straight on. Mm -hmm. I have complete control over the image. Yeah, um, that's when you start getting into fine art. You start as a fine art photographer begins to create their own vision of a scene, and um, I think that that's where that's where the separation is. Um, a photographer, a quote unquote photographer, doesn't do that. Um, and, and there's a lot of people that talk about, well, you know, you have to ma you manipulate this image. Well, that's not so great because it's not the pure, it's not the shot that comes out of the camera. Well, you're right. But as a fine artist, you, you exercise control over that scene and you display how you want that, that scene to look. And you control the lighting and all that stuff. You're in complete control of that. So, Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And it's your vision. It's what you you envision seeing out of that scene. Right. You know, um, I'm I'm definitely more of a purist. I don't really do a whole lot of manipulating with my nature photography. I do digital art pieces where I'll take my photography and layer it and create something new. Mm -hmm. um, but for me. It's, I never rely on the equipment mm -hmm. because it's my eye that is the artist. You know, um, what I shoot is what you see when I print it. You know, um, the lighting is what's moved me. It, it's all there. I don't have to do anything to it. You know what right. I mean? It's, it's there. Right. But, you know, uh, I think a lot of people's um, idea of things are a little bit skewed. But that's why I love talking with photographers because everybody is at a different level in photography, mm -hmm. but they all have different sort of ideas of what photography means. Exactly. Not just to them, but also in general, you know, what photography means. And I know a lot of great photographers like yourself who are just, I mean, phenomenal. You, you, you have a passion for getting out there and letting your eye dictate yeah. and see. Because I I can tell you a lot of photographers I've known over the years, they only look through the lens, you know, they never see with their eyes first. Right, right. And to me, that's a huge mistake. Right, a lot of uh, a lot of photographers will go around and say, you go around the city of Chicago, oh, that's a nice, a pretty building, snap, and they're done, and that's okay. fine. But Personally, I look at that building. I, I love the architecture. Let me walk around the building. Let me study it. Oh, you know what? I think it would be great if the light came in. I, I would convert it to black and white. Mm -hmm. 
um, and there are different ways to convert the image to black and white. I would look at, well, how, how would it look if the, if the light came in from the right or if the light came in from the left? And then I start, you know, so as I, I, I take this snapshot of the image and then when I go into post-processing, then I start creating my, how I envision the image will look in the end. And I have different ways of doing that. Um, and that's when you start getting into fine art. Yeah. And there's really no wrong, no wrong answer, right? If you wanted to go out and take snapshots and you're happy with that, that's fine. Yeah. If you want to go in and manipulate your images to your desire, to, to, to your delight, there's nothing wrong with that. But for somebody to say, well, you're not, you know, you're not a purist. Well, maybe you don't want to be a purist. Maybe, maybe you want to have, maybe you want to be a fine artist. Maybe you want to control how you want your end result to look, your end image to look. Um, there's no wrong answer to me. So, well, to me, shoot there's, what you, like. you know, however style you choose to follow in your work, as long as you're doing it with passion makes you yes. a fine artist. And yes. that's how I define it. Without passion, you're not an artist. Period, end of statement. I don't care how, if you got an MFA, I don't care if, you know, uh, you studied o over the, you know, uh, top mm -hmm. artist in the world. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make you them, and it doesn't make you an artist. Passion for art makes you an artist. I agree. And you have it, my friend. I agree. And um, I think a lot of people we'll talk about uh, in, in the future will also be able to see that you know and express themselves and understand what's the difference between a novice and and a real artist period right. and that's yeah. you know it's not that i don't think novice are um you know i'm not pointing a finger at them i want everybody to find creativity in their life but to me the badge of being an artist that's like the badge of a ceo or a business owner or the president of the united states that's a badge mm -hmm. you know you mm -hmm. earn Right. And it comes through passion for what you do. Yeah. And photography and is one of those things. you can't make it passionate. I mean, you can't <clears throat> force yourself to be passionate either. It, it, no, it, you can't. It, it comes from within. Yeah, right? you're born with uh, it. And yeah, you're, you're born with it. Um, I know when I was a kid, my parents used to take us, on, take us kids on uh, family vacations every year. My father was a professional driver. So every Sunday he'd pile us all in the station wagon and we'd go up and down the East Coast of different states. And they always took pictures, both of them. And they, they still have the brownie camera. I'm trying to get it out of their hands. <laughs> they still have their wow. brownie camera. Um, but that's part of what led me into photography. And I kind of dabbled in it for a while. But then when I, like I said, when I started, when I was in the military uh, in Germany, that's, that's when it really started to to grab me, and um, and it's I look back over the years, and it's 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 not something I forced myself to get into. Right, right? it just was uh, magical. It just it just nat it was natural for me. Yeah, and I just continued to learn, um, uh, and again make mistakes. I made plenty of mistakes, and I'm still making them. But um, just like anything, you, you're going to have to make those mistakes. But if you have a passion for it, it's coming from within. Yeah. And um, you just have to keep. It's all about refining and the refining challenge and of learning new and things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know when you know we I think I talked about this in one of the previous videos is you know this whole idea of mastering one's craft. I just don't really I don't fall into that school of thought. <laughs> You know, I feel like if you've mastered your craft, then I feel bad for you because that means what? That you're right, you've the, the ceiling, right? Is you, that the you, end? That's all you, you got? Could about it. Well, yeah, right. I, I, so I, I don't, I don't fall for that. I think yeah. we're all going to continue to learn new things as artists. I strive for that. <laughs> I need the challenge. You know, I need to always. My emotional prowess isn't always going to work with one medium. Right. You know, and that's yeah. going to tell me, you know, dictate to me what I'm going to be working with. And sometimes it's materials that I've never worked with in my life. Yeah. But I love it. Yeah. You know? I have a friend who's who's mixing photography with painting. Yeah, and so you know, he's he's stepping outside the box to to try different things. So, you know, he's pushing himself beyond beyond the camera. Right. Experimenting with other things. So those kinds of things you, you, you do. 
yeah. over time, just to see, you just in the, in the way to, to get better, create more, um, start new adventures, you know, um, and so that's, that's, that's pretty cool.